In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to take an existing logo, turn that into black and white pixels, import that into ZBrush, and then use that as an alpha to go ahead and create a shape like what we see here for the Nerf logo or this end strike kind of logo. So I'm going to hop on over real quick to Photoshop, and I'm going to show you this uh, Nerf logo that I was lucky enough to find. Um, so I was able to take that and turn it into uh, black and white information. Uh, not too difficult for that. Um, I could show you this where if I just made a new solid color on the back here and just made it black and throw it underneath here. Um, what I did find was a PNG file that's got transparency within it, so that was pretty nice to be able to have that. Um, the other thing I could do with this logo is if I took the levels adjustments of this, so I go here and say levels, and we really kind of uh, crank the darks up on there like that, and maybe crank the whites up a little bit like this. I'm trying to get it closer to being just pure black and white. Um, I could just go ahead and hold down shift, select all this, hit control E to uh, flatten everything. Now there is a, uh, a processing thing within here. If we go to image mode, uh, sorry, image adjustments, and then we do uh, threshold. If we do that, we can drag this little slider here and we can kind of go through slices of the image to try to find different kind of levels and things like that. So we could do something like that, just turn it into black and white like this right here, like that. Um, the other thing that I did, I think I pulled this thing into ZBrush and if I put it on the marquee tool, just tap M for that. Uh, if I put on here a fixed ratio of a width for two and a height of one, that'll give me an image that is uh, twice as uh, long as it is high like that and just kind of center this thing up like this and then uh, end up cropping it. Go to image crop, something like that. And so that gave me basically this black and white image. Uh, I saved this out as a Photoshop file and it's flattened. Uh, so you can go to layer, uh, you can say flatten image right on here and save it out as a Photoshop file. That'll make it easy to go into ZBrush and then pull it in to ZBrush. So I'm gonna hop on over to ZBrush. And you can see over here in their alpha area, you're going to want to go ahead and say import, and you find where that uh, logo sits. So I'm just going to pull that in, right? Hit uh, open for that. It's already sitting within here like this. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is use a uh, plain 3D. So currently I'm looking at the entire image uh, right here of this gun. I'm going to go to maybe the simple brush, and it'll tell me to switch off the current tool that I have. My cursor will turn white because it dropped these down as like pixels. I can hit control N to clear the canvas for that. And then I'll just go up and through here and choose their uh, plain 3D. And I'll click and drag this out. I'll turn on the uh, polyframe after I hit T to go into edit mode. So I'll turn on uh, the polyframe information right down here like this. Um, the thing about this is it's a primitive, so we can change some of the uh, dimensions of it, some of the geometry, things like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to this initialize down here, and we've got an H radius, and we've got a V radius like this. So I can pick, put this down to like 50 right here like this. So now this piece of geometry is twice as long as it is high, just like what our image is. And we've got an uh, H divide, and we've got a V divide like this. So I'll just put this at 100, and I'll put this at 50 like this. And uh, let's see, let me do this again, 100 and then 50. So that should give us nice, even squares of uh, geometry at this point, right? Um, so in order to take this out of this uh, primitive mode, and make it into actual geometry, we're going to click this Make Poly Mesh 3D, like that. And uh, the other thing we want to do is make sure this should have uh, UV information on it. Let's just check that real quick. So UV map, you can say, like, I'm going to make a, a map that's like 2048. That's what it's on right now. If you click Morph UV, it should uh, take the image and then lay it out as if you're taking a look at the UV. So everything's square. Everything's good for this uh, piece of geometry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, dividing this thing up. So if I go under geometry, we can do this divide button, but I do know that this will kind of like round out the corners a little bit. So if we turn off this smooth uh, modifier for the subdivide, we can just divide this thing up and we'll do about, uh, we'll do about five divisions or so. And then we can turn that back on. 
Um, now at this point, I'll take my alpha and I'll just click on it and uh, have it loaded up. One thing that's kind of odd to me about uh, ZBrush is it's got its uh, UV information and it's like flipped and upside down from like all the other packages. Uh, they say they're correct and everybody else is wrong, but uh, I don't know. The only thing that I do know is that we're going to have to take this image that you see here and we're going to have to uh, flip it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this alpha as a mask. So we can go down the masking area. Let me show you what's going to happen here. And we will say mask by alpha. Let's find that in here, right here. Mask by alpha. So the alpha is loaded over here. We click mask by alpha. And you see we've got this image and it's uh, flipped. So what we can do is go to alpha and they've got a flip vertical and horizontal like that. And now we can click mask by alpha again. And so now we've got this. Uh, now if we hit control I for inverse of our mask, we've got this part mask like that, right? And there's this cool functionality where if you hit uh, control W, it'll make a poly group out of anything that you uh, have masked. So now we've got a piece of geometry. Uh, we've got this kind of Nerf logo thing going on here like this, right? And really we don't need uh, the back part of this. So we can um, hide this part of the model. So if we hold on Control and Shift and click on this part, it'll hide the inner part. If we click this again, holding down Control and Shift, it'll give us the inverse of that. Uh, so that'll give us this shape here. Let's go to geometry and say delete hidden. So if we go to geometry, say modify topology, and we're going to do uh, delete hidden right here like that. It's going to tell us though that we have subdivision levels and it doesn't like that. And so we've got to get rid of the subdivision levels. So if we bring everything back, I knew that was going to happen. Just wanted to kind of uh, bring this to your attention that we're going to have to do this. So if we just hit delete lower, we've got all these subdivision levels, right? We hit delete lower, this thing becomes locked and there's no like history to this thing at all anymore and these are just purely uh, pieces of geometry. So if you hold on control shift, we'll click on that piece just to make things a little bit easier. And now we'll do uh, delete hidden like that, right? Um, so this is a pretty, pretty dense uh, piece of geometry. Um, one thing we could do is, I'll do this, I like to run this polish or polish by features. Um, I have it on my interface that you see here, and I'll turn off this little donut hole. But this actually exists under deformation, and if you go to this area and you do uh, polish by features, you can just run this just a, with a little bit of uh, the slider, and you can see how it starts to kind of round out the shapes a little bit. So you got to be a little bit careful with it, and I mean, if you run it too much, then it's going to potentially destroy corners and things like that. But we've got um, a pretty nice shape going. Um, let me turn off on the poly frame. I'll turn off line so we can just kind of see this more as a shape like this. So there's um, a couple different ways that we could potentially get some thickness on here. Um, you, If this was a lower resolution model, we could use the Z modeler. We probably could, but it would maybe take a little bit of time and effort to do that. Like it, the computer would sit there and think about it um, a little bit. So there is this interesting thing that you can do where if you go to morph target and you say store morph target and you've got this like initial position and I'll put on the move tool their new gizmo tool that they've got here hold down alt and just tap on the surface of this and it looks like everything is nice and straight up and down but I'll just hold down alt and I can click on here and then hold down alt and click the reset button. So if I uh, move this thing up a certain distance, however like thick you want this thing to be, we've got this difference between this beginning position and the end position, right? And if we do this create difference mesh right here, it'll make a mesh based off of the distance, uh, distance of the movement of this thing here. So uh, it should actually throw that right here. You'll see it's called morph difference and you can see it's going to take that logo and it's going to build um, uh, thickness to it at that point so um, again what I did with the the polish you can see that this isn't like super super crisp in here um, let's take a look at the uh, actual polyframe in here so here's one thing to kind of note about this is that it's just going to make geometry going like straight up and down for this so if I Move it to the side, my camera, and hold on shift and snap the view there. If I turn on 
on turn on and off perspective by tapping P. Um, we've got this piece of geometry in through here. Now it is kind of hard sometimes to just isolate just that thing. Uh, that went pretty well for me, so that's fine. Um, now what I could do is use the um, the slice curve uh, tool. So to get to that, it's Control Shift, come up into this area, and you can use the uh, slice curve right in through here, like this. Now what this allows you to do, I can zoom out just a little bit, and I'll hold down Control and Shift, and I can drag out a straight line like this, and I could just slice through this model and if I don't like the position of it while I'm holding down control and shift I can add the spacebar modifier to it and that'll let me move this thing around and so what I'm just trying to do is give myself a few um, divisions through here and I think that will be fine um, I don't want any of these new poly groups I don't want this all to be one poly group so if I hit control W that'll make a poly group out of whatever is visible so to bring everything back, control shift click in here, and you can see I can turn off the line again. So basically I was just trying to give myself um, enough geometry to where I could do something like this, where I could select this by holding down control shift. If I mask this, I'm gonna hold down control, and just click in the viewport like this, and then I'll bring back the visibility of everything, control shift, click in the viewport. And then now what I could do is uh, inverse that mask and um, use the polish by feature like really what I want to do is just polish this part and leave everything else alone um, now to do that I could I could have my mask kind of pull in a little bit if I hold down control and then click once on it like this it's gonna soften the mask and now I can hit control I for my mask to inverse it so I'm like really holding all this is exposing a little bit more of this in through here and then I'll just go back to the deformation area and then I'll do polish by feature and I'll turn off that donut hole thing there. And you can see it's gonna kind of, you know, start polishing that thing up. Uh, if I hold on control and click on the mask again, I can kind of soften that up a bit more, kind of make that a bit stronger. And if I get rid of the mask completely, I just hold on control and drag in here. Let's do a polish by feature again. Again, at this point, because I don't have a mask on here, I need to be a little bit careful because if I drag it too much, you know, I really start to affect the, the corners and things like that. So just be a little bit uh, careful about that. So I, I think that looks um, that looks pretty, pretty good uh, for that. And so that's basically how you can take this black and white image and you can get a, uh, a logo kind of built and uh, have some thickness kind of generated from that.